I want to thank you for the privilege of being with you this evening. And as we open our Bibles and study the Word of God together, it's my prayer that it will be a, a great blessing to you. Now, for a number of weeks, we have been looking at the book of Ephesians on several different subjects. You'll remember, first of all, there's three major divisions in the book. Uh, division number one has to do with the wealth of the believer. The Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 1 and verse number 3 that we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Then the second thing the book of Ephesians deals with is the walk of the believer. Starting in chapter number 4 through chapter number 6, Paul talks about the walk and what ought to characterize the walk of every true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. Then in chapter number 6, we've been dealing with the warfare of the believer. In verse number 10, the Apostle Paul talks about the energy that we need for this spiritual battle that we are engaged in. Beginning with verse number 11 through verse number 13, the Apostle Paul talks about the enemy that we face in this spiritual battle we are in. And then beginning at verse number 14 through verse number 17, the Apostle Paul deals with the equipment that is needed for protection in this spiritual battle that we are in. And then when you come to verse number 18, the Apostle Paul talks about the engagement of prayer that is necessary in the spiritual warfare of the believer. I'm going to pray, and after we pray, we'll begin looking at verse number 18 on this matter of prayer and the spiritual war that we are in. Our loving Father, we do thank you for thy word, and I pray as we open the scriptures, the Holy Spirit will lead us and direct us in all that we do and say that it might glorify you and that it will be a help to every believer in Christ. And we'll thank you for what you do because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. In verse number 18, the Apostle Paul says this, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. The Apostle Paul has been dealing with these things that are necessary in order for you and I to have an effective and protective life in this spiritual war that we are in. Victory in the Christian life is dependent upon our, our, our protection that we have and the equipment that God has provided for us. We'll never be successful in the Christian life apart from this matter of prayer, especially when it comes to the battle that we are in and going up against the strongholds of the devil. We need this privilege of prayer, the power of prayer that connects us with the Lord himself. Our relationship with God will never, never grow and properly be developed. We'll be weak and vacillating in the good things of the Lord if we are not consistent and regular in our prayer life. So prayer, prayer, the privilege of prayer, is the key to a, a strong, productive, and victorious Christian life. So how would you see your prayer life? Do you, do you really enjoy praying? Is it a privilege to you? Is it a joy to you to be able to go to the Lord in prayer? How, how often do you pray? Is it something that you do just when you sit down at the meal table and you offer a, a, a few words or a few sentences uh, to express your gratitude for the food that you're about to eat? How often do you pray? Is it something that you practice regularly and, and, and is a very much, much a part of, of your spiritual walk and fellowship with the Lord? If everybody in the church prayed just like you, how strong would the church be? Or maybe I should ask, how, how weak would the church be? What, what important place does prayer play in your Christian life? Someone said that prayer is work, and I believe that. The devil fights us in this matter of prayer. He doesn't want us to go to the Lord in prayer because he knows we are connecting to God who is the source of power and blessing and victory in the life of every Christian. A, a praying Christian will be a growing Christian. A prayerless Christian will be a weak Christian. Now, when you look at this passage of Scripture, uh, you discover that the armor that God has provided is for our protection. 
but there are two pieces of, of offensive weapons that are mentioned in this passage of Scripture that are very vital and very important to our victory every day. The first is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and the second is this matter of prayer. Both of those are offensive weapons that we use in coming against the strongholds of the devil. Tonight we want to look at this matter of prayer. The key to victory and the need of prayer in the life of every Christian. The first thing that I would call your attention to is the frequency of prayer. You'll notice in verse number 18, praying always. That word always is very important. When you read through the New Testament, you find an emphasis on, on the importance, the value, and, and the frequency of prayer in the life of the Christian. In Luke chapter 21, in verse number 36, the Bible says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always. In the book of Acts chapter 6, in verse number 4, when the early church was about to uh, uh, appoint deacons so that the preachers could give themselves to prayer and, and to the ministry of the Word of God. That was the reason that they wanted deacons. In Acts chapter 6 and verse 4, but we will, con we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. In Romans chapter 12, in verse number 12, when the Apostle Paul was outlining some of the responsibilities of the Christian and how important they were, he said in verse number 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. In the book of Colossians chapter 4, and in verse number 2, the Bible says continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, the Bible says, praying without ceasing. Luke chapter 18 and verse number 1, the Bible says, men ought always to pray and not to faint. So you can see the, the frequency of prayer that always is in the life of a, a true committed Christian. We pray always. It's a, it's a daily, daily need, a daily necessity, a daily urgency that we have. It simply means that your, your very thoughts, your very deeds, and, and the very circumstances of your life bring you to the closet of prayer. Th think about it for a minute. Trials cause us to pray. Bur burdens cause us to pray. Needs in your life and the needs in your family or the needs in your, your friends, that brings us to our knees in prayer. Lost souls certainly ought to bring us to the Lord in prayer. The need for guidance should bring us to prayer. Resisting Satan should cause us to pray. Overcoming bad habits in our life ought to cause us to pray. The need for confidence and courage in this battle, this spiritual war that we are in, ought to bring us to the closet of prayer. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 6, a very familiar passage of Scripture. Be careful for nothing. Now notice, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. When you read this passage of Scripture, you, you see the diversity of prayer. There's two words that are used here. He talks about prayer and he talks about supplication. Is there a difference? I, I believe there is or it wouldn't be put the way it is in this passage of Scripture. Prayer has to do with generally talking to the Lord, fellowshipping with the Lord, asking for His blessing and His favor. It means to seek His favor. It means to cry out to Him for help that you need in your Christian life or to just simply draw nigh to God in sweet fellowship with Him. James chapter 4 and verse 8, the Bible says, Draw nigh to God and He will draw nigh to you. And, and then the Bible uses this word supplication. What does that mean? It means to make request or to make petition to the Lord. It means to be specific in what you're asking God to do. When you examine the prayer life of David in the Old Testament, uh, you'll, you'll discover that he often prayed for mercy or he, he prayed for guidance or he prayed for deliverance. He prayed for forgiveness. Those are things that we ought to be specific in asking God to do in our individual life. Jesus directed his disciples, those early followers of his, to pray for your daily, your daily bread, your daily needs ought to be brought to the Lord in prayer. We are to make requests for 
for self, and we're also to make requests for others as well. And when we do, we ought to do that humbly. We, we ought to do that earnestly. We certainly ought to do that with a desire for His will to be made known to us. So we, we see the frequency of prayer and how it ought to be regular in our individual daily lives. The second thing that I see in this passage of Scripture is the form of prayer. The Bible says that we are to watch with all perseverance. Watch with perseverance. What, what does that mean? It means that you and I are to be a, a, alert to issues that are around us. It means to be alert to what is happening around us. Jesus himself said in Mark chapter 14, and in verse number 38, watch ye and, and pray. Uh, we, we, we make our surroundings a matter of prayer. I, I, I never hear an ambulance going or a fire truck going. That uh, I don't ask God to, to help whatever the situation might be. When I go by a graveyard and I, I, I see a gra gathering of people around a, a, a cemetery or a graveyard, I ask the Lord to comfort those hearts and encourage them in their time of grief. And, and most importantly, if there's someone in that band of people that needs the Lord, that's not saved, that the gospel will be given and they will be drawn to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are things that we ought to pray for. Walking down the street and passing a beer garden. I always ask God to close that thing up, to dry it up and to do away with it because of all the damage that it does and, and the hurt that it's caused and the divided families that has resulted of, because of, of liquor. So we make our surroundings a matter of prayer. We, we, we make sure that we're watching, we're alert, we, we see what's happening. And, and certainly, you don't have to go very far today uh, to see things that you ought to be praying about. Uh, picking up a newspaper, listening to the news, all of those things become a matter of urgent prayer and need. Watching, being alert, and being familiar with surroundings and making them a matter of prayer. And he says that we're to do that with perseverance. To, to persevere means to stick at it. It, it, it. it means to stay at it. It means to be praying continuously, making these matters of, of prayer in, in your life. You do that with persistence regularly. We need to pray. And when we do, we, we ask God specifically for, for whatever we're asking Him to do. I think so many times our, our, our prayers are really so general that, that we don't see the answers to those prayers. God bless all the sick. God meet all the needs of the church. Father, help, help my family. Well, how do you want them to help your family? What needs in the church are, are you asking God to meet? What, what, what do you need the Lord to do? We ought to be specific in asking Him to do things in our individual life and in the life of others. A, a great and tremendous and unbelievable promise is given to us in John chapter 14 and beginning with verse number 13, where the Bible says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You talk about a tremendous promise God gives us in that passage of Scripture. Every time I read that, I feel a shout coming on. I want to praise the name of the Lord because He's given us an open invitation to come and ask. Lay it out before me, specifically desiring, what is it that you want me to do? We're to ask in Jesus' name. And that's not just a little phrase that we tack on at the end of our prayer life. When we ask in Jesus' name, we're asking for those things that will glorify His name, things that are consistent with His will to be done. It means the things that honor Him, the things that praise Him, the things that glorify Him. That's what it means to pray in Jesus' name. And, and, and always keep in mind the unlimited, abundant, undepleted resources that He has at His disposal. God doesn't bless us taking from His resources. God blesses us and meets our needs according to His resources. That ought to encourage us to pray big prayers, to bring big needs before the Lord. I, I, I brought a big need before the Lord this morning, beyond, oh, beyond my imagination. 
If God answers this prayer request, it will be the Lord. It indeed will be the Lord. Maybe someday I'll be able to share with you that very prayer request that I've asked God and, and specifically prayed for the exact thing that I, I, I would be desirous of Him doing, if it be His will. To pray in Jesus' name means to pray for things that are consistent with His will and things that will fulfill the very purpose that He wants to do. It expresses our, our, our sincere uh, and, and honest evaluation that, that uh, we are not self-sufficient and, and that we are utterly unworthy of anything and everything that God would ever do in regards to this matter of prayer and asking Him. It expresses our desire for God to be glorified in the answer. When we pray specifically, it gives God the opportunity to display His power. It gives God the ability, the, the, it gives Him the privilege, the opportunity to display His power. When we pray for others, watching means that you look around and, and, and you see the needs that others might have. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 3 prayed for these believers. And the Bible says, beginning at verse number 13 of the third chapter, Wherefore I, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you. And he begins to list the very things specifically that he wants God to do in the life of these Ephesian believers. That's the way we ought to pray. Are we doing that? And then I, I see in this passage of Scripture the force of prayer. The Bible talks about praying in the Spirit. Notice in Ephesians chapter 6 and in verse number 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. In the Spirit. That means by the means of the Spirit, develop your prayer life. With the help of the Holy Spirit, come to the Lord in prayer. According to the Spirit's leading in your life, make those matters what you bring to God in prayer. Praying for the very things that the Holy Spirit is leading you to pray about. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse number 26, the Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Holy Spirit wants to help us in our prayer life. And as we depend upon Him to stir our hearts, to burden our hearts, the very, the very, the very burden that we have comes from the Holy Spirit. When we have a burden to pray about something, something comes to our mind. It's the prompting of the Holy Spirit that is leading us to engage in this matter of prayer. Prayer is essential to victory in the life of every Christian. And I, I, I want to remind you that praying has to do with asking. You have not because you ask not. What is it that you're asking God to do? Are you asking God something specific for your family? Are you asking God something specific for your church? Are you asking specific for something in the life of your missionaries? What What is it that you are specifically asking God to do? Prayer letters are read and needs are mentioned and the requests are made. Do we take those matters and bring them to the Lord in prayer? Or do we just say, well, bless our missionaries, or bless the church, or bless our families, bless our next door neighbor, bless my Christian friend? We need to be specific in our prayer, and we're asking God specifically to do something for His honor and for His glory. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, in verse number 7, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Now, notice these next words. For everyone. Does that include you? Does that include me? For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. 
and he that knocketh, it shall be open. Do you expect God to answer your prayers? You need to ask and bring it to Him in prayer. We ought to pray with thanksgiving. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 4 and in verse number 6, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Are, are you grateful for what God has done, what God is doing, and how He's answered your prayers? Certainly we ought to come to Him with expressions of thanksgiving and praise and adoration and and humbly bowing before Him and lifting up our voice in praise to the blessings that He has bestowed upon us. So prayer has to do with asking. It ought to be done with thanksgiving. And prayer ought to be engaging in faith. I'm exercising faith in what we're asking God to do. The Bible says in Mark 11 and in verse number 24, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. So prayer has to do with asking. Prayer, prayer ought to be done with thanksgiving, and prayer ought to be done in faith, believing God is able to answer that in accordance to His will. I want you to think about this. Prayer does not inform God. Prayer exercises faith in God. Pr prayer does not inform God, but prayer exercises faith and energizes faith in God. So, my dear friend, be a praying Christian. It's part of the weapon that we have, the offensive weapon that we have to go up against the strongholds of the devil. We have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we have the power of prayer at our disposal. Use them for the honor and glory of God. Father, Bless the Word of God to our hearts this evening. Encourage each believer and strengthen us in this matter of prayer. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and thank you for the privilege to be with you. Until we get together again, keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon.